Well, hello there, friends. Welcome to Growth Reframed. We are so excited that you're joining us, whether you're doing that online on the YouTube or if you're listening to wherever you get your audio podcasts, we're thankful for you. Today is a big day for us. It is. I'm sorry. I'm still laughing because you said the YouTube and it made (laughs) me think of how my dad says the Facebook still. Yeah, but it is a big day. I'm really excited. This is actually our 200th freaking episode. Dude, and give it I'm up. pumped. Give it Boom. Up, man. Yeah, I mean, it feels it feels it feels crazy. Like to say that I mean we've been doing it now for four years. We've man, we've gone through a lot. We've we've continued to show up in the face of that. And dang, two hundred episodes. And I know we've said it before, but for those of you who don't know, I mean you can Google it to check me. Uh, but most people that decide they're going to do a podcast, they don't make it past seven episodes. And we've known a handful of people that have tried it and done that. But the fact is, it's not as easy as it looks. I promise. It's not as easy as it looks as as much as we make it look great. You know, (laughs) you know, it's not as easy as it looks and it is difficult. And, Mm. you know, it's, it's important I get like we're pumping ourselves up right now, but it's important that we pat ourselves on the back a little bit because it is a challenge. It is difficult and it is okay, by the way, to celebrate yourself. And so that's really, really cool. And (laughs) with the 200th episode and with the idea that we were going to come together and talk about this episode and just reflecting, there's been a lot of stuff happening recently that's made us take an internal look, have some private conversations that we wanted to bring forward today because I think it's important stuff. And in some ways it, it kind of messes us up a little bit. It like, it makes us change what we're actually trying to do and what are we here for and why are we showing up the way we need to continue to show up and are, and do we want to mm-hmm. continue to show up? And like all these questions have come up. And so I really am happy that we're sitting here and able to have this conversation. And I will tell you that <laughs> me and Meg started to have this conversation the other day and I was like, wait, 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 <laughs> I don't want to have too much of this conversation. I love where you're going with this, but let's take it to y'all out there. Let's have this conversation because it's just going to be something that's important for everyone to hear. And I don't, say that often, but I think this is literally important for everyone to hear today. I do too. I want to take a step back before we get into the meat of this conversation and just kind of take our listeners through a journey. I know that so many of you have been with us from the beginning, back when we were Fools in Love podcast. Ride or die. Uh, And so we thank you for that. We are truly just so appreciative of the fact that you guys have been hanging out with us for this long. But when we started this podcast, we were not growth reframed. We were the Fools in Love We had no real idea what we were doing other than let's start a podcast. And we started that podcast. Guys, if you go back and listen to those early episodes, you will not hear Growth Reframed. You will hear us talking about anything and everything under the sun. We will be awkward and weird and stilted and we use way, way, way too many ums, which I know we kind of do still, but we hopefully do a little bit less umming and ahhing these days. You'll just hear a bunch of stuff that's over time kind of morphed into who we are today. And I want to take you back to the Fools in Love day, days and back to the beginning because it really is part of the journey. It's part of how we got here. When, when we started, we did not know really what we were going to be. We were like, should we be a relationship con- podcast? Should we do growth reframed? Or growth reframed? Should we do personal growth? What are we really looking for? And so it kind of just morphed into everything and meshed kind of into this messy thing. And eventually, we kind of got to the point where we were like, well, wait a second what really are we? And our focus, even though we were, st- we were still the fools in love, really became on personal growth. We were hardened on personal growth. We were, it, we were really just exploring all the books, all the podcasts, all the, all the things you can take in. And we started almost emulating other people and trying to do what they were doing until it came to pretty recently in the last couple of years where we were like, ooh, is this who we want to be? And I'll let you continue the story, Brian, because I've been taking up a lot of time right now. But it is important to kind of go back because where we're at today is not where we thought we would be when we started this thing. 
And I'm so glad for that because we've really had a change of heart on even the idea of personal growth, hence the name Growth Reframed, because we are not trying to be who we once were trying to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the whole idea of Growth Reframed, like you said, it's reframing your thinking on topics. If you say you want to reframe something, it's like, well, let's change our perspective. Let's look at it in a new way. Let's look at it with a new lens and let's not take it at face value. Let's dig a little deeper because I truly believe that many things in life aren't black and white. Many of them happen in the gray area. Even though we want it to be easy and we want it to be chopped just right to say, well, there's a right or wrong answer. There's a yes or no. There's a, there's a definitive way to do this. I don't think there is because I don't think there's a one size fits all for everyone out there. And so one of the things we unpacked when we even changed to growth reframed, by the way, the idea of growth reframed came at me in a therapy session because my therapist often asked me to reframe my thinking on all the toxic crap that I continued to say to her on a weekly basis and continued to say, no matter how many times she told me, (laughs) that's not the way you know, we've talked about this. That's not the way you're supposed to continue. Let's reframe our thinking. What would it look like if, you know, all the therapy talk and honestly, that's where we came up with the idea of reframing our thinking on growth. Now, one of the things that I didn't realize when I entered my therapy journey and when I was depressed and anxious and worried was how much of this surrounded the idea of personal growth, how much of my obstacles and things that were in my way and ways that I was actually deterring myself came from the very things that I thought were enriching me, were changing me, were allowing me to have a personal journey for myself and improve myself and be a better version of myself and all the other crap that people sling about the idea of personal growth. And so if you don't hear it in my voice, one of the things that I go up against. And one of the things that brought this conversation up is we're 200 episodes in. And like you said, Meg, some of the things we were saying in the first seasons of Fools in Love, which eventually became Growth Reframed, I don't believe anymore. Uh, I don't live by them anymore. I go back and listen and I, and yeah, I hear the ums and ahs and I hear the, the journey, which I, you know, I love that by the way, because I like that people can see that you can start from zero. We don't have it perfect now. It takes us you know, 20 minutes to try to get the setup for the cameras and get the lights, and sometimes it still doesn't work. And today we were trying to work in your iPad and make it work, and it wouldn't work. And so I just want to like share that to say like it's not perfect. We don't have a perfect little studio with a whole team behind us doing this. It's me and you doing this. And I think it's important to share the journey, so I'm glad that that stuff lives there. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the things that I hear, if I go back and listen, if I can even force myself to do that, is... Again, like you said, just recycling a lot of the beliefs that people were trying to put on me to say, that's how I live my life. And if I live it that way, then I will be a better version of myself. I will be more improved. I will be whatever it is. And a lot of those things are not a one size fits all. And so one of the reasons this growth reframed even became a thing is we wanted personal growth reimagined, a journey for you. Like it says in our intro, you know, we want to take your personal growth journey and make it something that works for you. So my question to you today is, does your journey work for you? Or are you just doing what other people are telling you to do? And how has that worked for you? If it's working for you, great. But a lot of the people I talk to, uh, just to be real, and myself included, you, Meg, friends, other people that have been in the space for a while, doesn't seem to be working that well for them. And so I get a little bit uneasy when I talk about two people out in the world that were a personal growth podcast, because I don't really believe I'm a personal growth podcast. I believe in some principles. I believe in the fact that it is a journey for you, a growth journey, but because I don't have another way to equate it and I don't have another term for how, what to call it, I call it personal growth. But if I'm being honest, when I go out in the world and I tell people that, you know, we have a podcast, they're like, oh, it's so cool. What's it about? And I'm like, personal growth. Some of them shudder (laughs) and some of them are like, that's really cool. And it's because there's a lot of negative connotations with the beliefs and the systems and the indoctrination of personal growth. A lot of which I've deflected and deterred from. And as much as I try to stand here and state those things loudly and proudly, 
I still continue to see those same messages come across my feed, come across the books I'm reading, come across everything. And it's really changed my perspective and reframed my thinking on all of it. Yeah. I mean, we were talking just the other day about how we're like a personal growth podcast that's kind of actually a little bit anti-personal growth. Like there's just not a term for what we believe yet because it's just kind of this weird mashup of beliefs. Like, yes, we believe that you should always be striving if that's what you want to do. And we believe that you should always be growing if that's what you want to do. But when you dive in first, when you first dive into personal growth, you kind of like find the big names and there's like, you know, 30 people who write big books and are big online presences. And you kind of like follow what they say. And they all say very similar things, maybe with some tweaks and some, you know, cute little things that they actually came up with, but most of it is a lot of just the same thing worded a tiny bit differently. And there was a year that you read like a hundred personal growth books. Well, they were mostly personal growth. I don't think they were all, but mostly. And that was a big year for you. You did so much reading, you did so much growth, but now you can hardly stand to look at a personal growth book because you're like, I've heard it all so many times and I don't even like, I mean, I'm a personal growth podcast that loves and believes in personal growth and I don't like to read personal growth pot, anything. I don't like to read a personal growth book. I don't like to listen to personal growth podcasts. Isn't that so weird? Like I'm telling you that I'm a personal growth podcast and I don't like it. Like (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm a personal growth believer and I don't want to read the books. And the reason for that is because it just starts to feel like it's not personal. It just starts to feel like, well, if 30 people out there in the aura of the universe are going to be telling me the, the things to do and those things don't work for me and those things lead to burnout and those things are, lead to exha- exhaustion and those things actually lead me to feel worse about myself than I ever than what I was when I ever even started. Can that even be personal growth? Can that even be real for me? Do I even want to associate with it mm-hmm. because I'm a hot mess express from trying to strive and trying to be at this level that these 30 people are telling me that I need to be and I'm mm-hmm. not there and I'm freaking tired because I can't be them. Well, and it's... <laughs> It's like, as you're talking about it too, you're like, okay, you know, we believe, I I do believe, I believe in being authentic. I believe in being vulnerable, but how many of the people that are telling you to be authentic and vulnerable are actually authentic and vulnerable? Mm -hmm. And to what extent? And to what extent? And if they believe it, if they believe the things they're saying, cool, but like, do they really believe all the things they're saying or do they, you know, meet up and come together and say, these are the things we're going to talk about or... I don't know. All I'm saying is when I look at them, they all look very similar. They sound, I shouldn't say look, they sound very similar. The things they're saying, like you said, they have their own little quips, but they sound very similar. And I'm like, do you really believe that? And is that really how you're living your life? And we've seen recently and throughout our journey in the four years, people that are not living it. They might say it on social media. They say it online that that's what they're doing, but then it comes out that they are not living that way. That is not the life they're living. They're promoting healthy lifestyle and they're not living healthily. They're saying they want to be vulnerable and authentic, but they're not really being authentic or they are to a point. And I don't even like when I say that, I don't even want to say you have to be, I don't even believe me and you Meg have to be fully authentic. There are things that I'm never going to share on this podcast that have happened in our life. But I'm also not promoting the fact that I'm basically have the, the keys to the castle and I have all the answers for how you do this. And on the back end, I'm burnt out and miserable. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times what happens is when you talk to people in the space that are not people living in real life, I mean, some of them are, but a lot of times they, they have whole teams of people behind them making their stuff go and making it work. So I'm not saying they're not working hard. I'm not trying to discount that. But like, you can't compare us to that. You can't compare our life to that. And so what's really brought it up is a few things recently where I just, I'm like, is, do I even want this? There's been a few things that have happened where there's a lot of hate and a lot of things where people didn't really live up to the person that these people built them up to be or the, whoever they said they were. And then with that, there's a lot of hate coming out about it and about how people just have opinions and everything else. And it's led us to question, like, do I even want to do this? Is this even the life I want? Like we talked a few weeks ago about haters and 
I'm not seeing near the hate that a lot of these people are seeing. And I still am questioning, like, is this even what I want? And is this even what I'm really like preaching or trying to teach? Like we say we're growth coaches, but it's like in reality, when I coach someone on growth, I'm not pushing these personal growth narratives. My issue is not so much with the with the name personal growth. It's just like, because if it was personal, then that's awesome. The problem is it's not. And we're posting, we're pushing out a lot of toxic beliefs. And I don't want to continue to be the one who's helping feed the negative narrative of the fact that like you could be enough if you really wanted to. And all the other things of where people say that's what they're, they're doing. And, and 200 episodes in has taught me that a lot of things have changed. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you're allowed to do that. 100%. And I'm, as I'm like listening to you talk, I'm just looking at your hat and it's your do it anyway hat. I love our do it anyway hat. I love our do it anyway slogan. I love your do it anyway tattoo on your arm. But I can see as I'm looking at you that that might be confusing for somebody who's listening to this podcast and thinking you're saying something different than what your hat says. And I just want to clarify and I just want to take a minute to go down that road because there are so many things we meant when we said do it anyway and that we still mean, and there are things we absolutely did not mean and still don't mean when we're saying do it anyway. We've talked about this before, but one of the things we do not mean and do it anyway is be tired, strung out, be overwhelmed, be in a horrible place mentally, and just keep grinding. Like you guys, like you guys know that. That's not what we believe. We just talked about toxic beliefs really recently on the podcast. We're not saying that. What we mean when we say do it anyway is way more personal. It's do it anyway because you feel like you might be too old or push past the fear that you're too young or too broke or too whatever. Push past those inner voice feelings, not real things that are happening to you and real excuses that should be dealt with. Do it anyway is not meant to mean, please go work at midnight because that's the time that you have to do it. No, rest at midnight. You're tired. Do it anyway is meant to be an encouragement to us and hopefully to you that you can push past all those fears that are living inside of your head, but not so that you do it until you burn out, not so you do it until you don't want to do it anymore and you want to just die. Like, no, we are not saying that. Don't do it till you want to puke. Don't do it till you want to give up. Do it when it's healthy to do it when you're pushing past and and growing and do it when there's some boundaries you're trying to push and get through, but not because you're at the end of sanity. Like, And I just wanted to say that because it can seem so funny when you're looking at all these little tenets of personal growth and you see somebody say something and you're like, I can't do that. And I'm sure that sometimes their meaning is exactly what you think it is, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's like do it anyway, where you are taking something totally different. And so that's where personal growth comes back to you. Making it personal means you take what you need and you leave the rest. Personal growth means you completely ignore something that we say that does not work for you and you might live or lean into something that actually does work for you. It doesn't mean you have to be 100% fans of Growth Reframe to find a nugget of anything that works for you and it doesn't mean that you have to leave the second something doesn't. It's just a real, true personal growth journey here and that's what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish. And I hope that you guys can feel that from us. I hope that you guys understand that we are not trying to just push some shit on you. We are just trying to make you understand, help you understand that it's totally up to you. Personal growth might be your jam and that's great, but it's not your jam 100% of the time for 100% of your life for the rest of forever. Amen. Personal growth is for you when it works and take it back when it doesn't and move it around when you need to reframe a little bit, make it work for you. And I don't know how else to preach this message other than to just keep saying the same things because it's so horrible when we keep trying to shove things down people's throats that make them feel terrible about themselves. We should be pushing each other to be better in a way that supports them and actually helps them and lifts them up, not tears them down. Right. And, and, and I started at the beginning of this episode saying that things aren't black and white. There's a gray area. And I think that's where we get mixed up because as much as I see like the anti-personal growth, there's like the haters of complete anything. If you even say the word, they're going to hate on it. And then the people out there who many of them are probably trying to do something and, and 
push a positive message out there. But there's a gray area in between. Just because, like you said, you don't agree with 100% of what someone says. By the way, I love you. I work with you. I do everything with you. And mm-hmm. I don't agree with a lot of what you say right. a lot of the time. It doesn't mean that like I can't be around you and be a part of like, we can't be a part of each other's lives and we can't like be best friends because we don't get along 100% of the time. Right. And a lot of the stuff in the world right now is like you, it's, it's cut or dry. It's black or white. You got to go on this side or this side, which side are you on? Are you liberal? Or are you Republican? What, which side are, you know, where are you on the fence? Do you believe in COVID vaccines or not? Like we, do you want puppies or kittens? Tell me now. Do you want puppies or and kittens? And unfriend me if you're a cat person. <laughs> right. And if you're a cat person, you know what? Yeah. I just, it, and I, and I feel like a lot of it is, you know, literally I love the phrase, like take what you want and leave the rest. I really do. And I've heard that on a personal growth, other things before. Mm -hmm. I love that idea though. The problem is then you sit there and you say though, yeah, do that. But then this is the way you have to live. You have to live this way. And if you live this way, if you follow the recipe and formula that me and Meg are giving you, you will be successful. And there's no guarantees of that. We've talked about it recently with overused personal growth, growth phrases. Like it, there's no guarantee that that's the thing. And there's no guarantee that that's what you even want. What I'm saying is I did it. I read a hundred books. I went to the conferences. I tried all the things. I listened to a thousand podcasts. I recorded a lot of them myself. And at the end of it, I wasn't feeling happy or fulfilled or pursuing uh, wanting to pursue anything. I was in therapy talking to my therapist about how to un like undo all the things and bad things that were put in there. And it's all of what you grab onto because in the space, they're like, yeah, yeah, get rest, but do these 15,000 things before you get rest, but then make sure you get some rest in there. And I'm sitting here trying to like run a company during the day, have, have a family and have anything and have time for myself and do self care and all the things while also trying to do that. Like that doesn't work for me. I don't know if it works for you. My guess is though, if you're honest with yourself and you look at yourself and you think about and you take, take note of how you're actually feeling on any given day, you might start to pull at the thread and ask the question and you might find yourself in the same place I was of realizing that maybe it's not all it's cracked up to be like, I am a growth coach. It doesn't mean that I drink the personal growth Kool-Aid all the time. Matter of fact, most of the time I don't. What we're trying to do is create a space, a space for people to see that like the journey is real, that you can struggle. Like we know next week, screw it. We're taking the week off. We're not recording a dang thing. And that's just a choice we're making. But I can't continue to sit here and say that that's what you need to do. And then I don't live by that either because I feel like a hypocrite. So I can't sit there and promote the things that I promoted a couple years ago with a straight face. I can only promote how I feel right now. And I can't tell you that years from now, I won't continue to evolve and change. And by the way, you should be too. It's okay to question what's going on. It's okay to look how you're wired and it's okay to rewire yourself and change and grow along the way, which is what this whole journey in my mind is about. That's how I think about personal growth. That's my definition not this convoluted crap that seems to be getting slung at every corner. Like you said, I can't even take it in anymore because it just, it doesn't serve me. And it makes me feel, it just makes me feel like mad and upset. And I'm not going to take things in that make me feel mad and upset. There's no point. Y'all we've been doing it 200 episodes and we hope, man, hopefully Lord willing, we'll be able to bring in 200 more, but it's a journey. It's a journey. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really like the Taylor Swift anti, uh, anti-personal growth hero, but I don't know. Like, I don't know what to call it, but I can only be honest with how I feel. And that's, that's where I'm at today. If this episode touched you, if you feel led just share it with someone over on social media, make sure to tag us at growth reframed. We love y'all. We'll see you next week.